Oh yes, my favorite red art supplies, human blood. No, I'm just joking. We started off with pink and we're moving down the rainbow to red. We are making art with all my red art supplies. This time, no blood included. But before we get into sketching or creating, my favorite part of any video, swatching all of our art supplies. Coming in hot with that basic red Sharpie. Really not sure how I feel about this Posca. It is technically called red wine, but even though I do like that dark variety, I might have to take it out just because it is very purple. And let us not forget our teeny weeny Tiny little colored pencil from the Teeny Weeny Challenge. Here we are, we have all of our red supplies swatched and ready to go. The only one that didn't make the cut was the Posca because it was just a little too purple for me. And here we go, let's get to sketching some ideas for some red art and get creating. What's a red thing? I was thinking, uh, brick buildings are red, fire, flowers, blood, lava, ketchup, cherries, lobsters, crabs, alcoholic beverages, lollipops, apples, sexy things like shoes. <laughs> Sexy things like shoes, I say. Balloons, tomatoes, a telephone. I mean, if you've got paint, literally anything could be red. So I feel like really we don't have to focus on something that is red as much as we do just focusing on maybe creating an environment or like an emotion or something that is angry or intense that is red. So I'm not sure exactly why this is what is coming to me, but I'm thinking a log and on that log, I want there to be a creature of some sort. I was expecting the horns to be a little more exciting than that, and then they just kind of stopped. That's okay. To be honest, I'm just kind of thinking, with so many different art supplies, I do want to make sure that we have different elements where each art supply can be used. So you do want to make sure I feel like that these challenges are well suited, if that makes sense. Wait, but what if there was like an arm sticking out of the bushes? Because you know we have to get blood in here, so maybe he murdered somebody. Dun dun dun! To get the gem from them. Oh my gosh. The story. Drawing from behind, definitely not the best way to go. I'm kind of liking, as much as I do like to just draw a bunch of different objects, I am liking whatever adventure is happening here. Should he have a sack? that's like spilled open that has all of these weird red objects. Maybe he's a collector of red things. He just really likes red things. Ooh, he's obsessed with the color red and he kills people just to see the color red. Things are getting spooky. Very quick sketch sesh, but I think we're onto something. Let's get on to creating our illustration, which I think I'm actually going to do landscape this time, despite sketching this in portrait. We'll figure it out. Okay, let's jump right into it. And of course we do need something to sketch with, which is always a struggle for me because unfortunately I still don't own any erasable colored pencils, which I keep telling myself I need to get just for these challenges. Is that cheating? I have no idea. Either way, I thought it would be best to use the Faber-Castell watercolor pencil in scarlet red, just because when I put watercolor on top of the sketch, at least the sketch will melt away in the water. And because I I'm using all red supplies, it will pretty much blend in. After sketching, it was time to line our illustration or part of it with my trusty Micron pens. Thankfully, these are super waterproof, so I know I can trust them to not melt away when I add watercolor. And because I have the most control with these and they're dark and trustworthy, they were the best for our main character barely scraping by with what little scarlet red we have left in the Schmincke watercolor pan. I use this to color in the bulk of our character just because I know with watercolor you do have the control to make a very light color. And I knew there was a lot of really dark red supplies coming in so I wanted to make sure we did have some lighter tones in this illustration and our main character was a perfect candidate for that. Then moving on to our Kuretake Cadmium Red to add some darker areas and creating a gradient was really nice with this watercolor. For whatever reason, I really like the way that gradient turned out. Did I already get too dark on our character when I was trying to keep it light? 
Maybe, maybe I got a little carried away with the gradient, regretfully, but oh well. I wanted to add some blush to our character and using this graphics watercolor pen was perfect for that. It had a little bit more of a pinky tint to it, so it was perfect for blushes. So the technique I used to apply this material is something that I end up doing a lot throughout this challenge. I put down the pen on a separate piece of paper then added water to that so that I was able to just use a little bit of the tint and not use that super strong dark red color. This way I was able to have more control and add more variety to the illustration. With our character all cute and blushed up, I used this Elo Hue Coral Red marker to add the pupils and the eyes and that, that is literally all I did with this marker. I think I just got really scared and paranoid about using all of the art supplies right away and then having nothing to use them for, so I was really using them sparingly throughout this illustration. Again, using the technique of writing on a separate piece of paper, I used this watercolor pencil from Faber-Castell in the color Pale Geranium Lake and got just a little bit of pigment to my watered down brush to add shadows to all of the white parts of the illustration so shading the eyes of the character and adding some shine to the water. Again, really just taking advantage of the fact that I can use just a little bit of color for some of these art supplies because the markers and pens, basically anything that isn't water soluble is so intense and so dark. And because I did want to focus on trying to separate our character from the background, I tried to choose reds that were a little bit more on the pink side for our character so that the background could be more red red. Using this Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the same color, I just grabbed a little bit of that and painted the horns. If you didn't notice, our character is some sort of weird moose guy and he's got four horns because why the heck not? Moving on to a somewhat regretful decision looking at the footage. Don't know why I did this, but I took the Kuretake in red and just painted it on so dark on that hoof. I might as well have just colored it in with the pen. Don't know what I was thinking, but there it is. Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pins coming back in scarlet red. I used this one to shade the horns, so it looks like the pit pins were on horn duty. I think I tend to do that throughout this illustration. If there are two art supplies from one set that kind of look like they could shade each other, I seem to gravitate towards doing just that. Then coming in with the Elo Hue in Carmine, I attempted to shade the hooves. Now the lighter color hooves, which probably should have been the darker color hooves, those shaded just fine. For whatever reason, I attempted to shade the ones that were just super saturated and super dark. What can I say? I, I tried. Oh boy, and here we come in with my biggest, most regretful decision of this whole piece. I've only used watercolor pencils a few times and I think I just forgot how pigmented those gosh darn things can be. I went in real dark with this pencil and filled in the entirety of the sky in the background and when I added water, oh boy, did things get real dark real fast. I did not mean to make that sky that dark, it spooked me. Thankfully, I was focusing on our character being a lighter color, so he does pop off of that darker background, but getting that dark really just limits you with what you can do in that area, so it just, it really gave me a spook. Thankfully, I added my favorite white birch tree, so we at least have that popping off of that super dark background. So not all is lost. Using yet another Faber-Castell watercolor pencil, I was able to add some fun little details to our trees. Again, I wanted to make sure that they were very white so that they did pop off of that really dark background. So just a few strokes here and there to add some details to the trees and those were done. Then I attempted to add some details to those trees using the Ohuhu geranium and you can't even see them. The background just got so dark that any attempt to add leaves or any details in the sky in the darkest area was just going to be useless, but gosh darn it, did I not try. <laughs> Thankfully, you can see some of the leaf details in the lighter area of the sky, but for the most part, oh boy. 
Using the Chameleon Fineliner, I wanted to add some hairy details to this character. As you guys know, I love adding some hairy details to my characters. So this pen was really perfect. It wasn't super dark, but it wasn't super light, just enough to add a subtle little texture. Typically, I do use the same color that I line with, but I thought because I had so many art supplies to get through, I would use something else for our hairy texture. And then moving on to our Muji pen to add the hairy details to the darker parts of our character. I did want to make sure that you could still see the hair because the chameleon pen wasn't dark enough to add those textures. Though one regretful decision is that the chameleon pen is not waterproof, which I completely forgot to check until it was too late, but thankfully the Muji pen is. So those hairy details are at risk of disappearing later. After being scarred from that dark background, I used the Pale Geranium Lake Faber-Castell watercolor marker to lightly color in the bushes in the background. I think I was just so scared and timid to go dark and I could always go darker, but you can't go lighter. And to help give those bushes some definition because they definitely needed some line art, I used the Pilot Friction Pen. It's pretty much the same darkness as the Microns I used to line our main character, but maybe it's a little softer so that it doesn't quite compete. Just to make sure that the character in the background really had nice separation, I used the Koi watercolor brush to color in the log because that color was definitely the most orange tinted red we had. So I knew that that would be a really good color to make sure that our character wasn't super melting into the background. And I think it really helped. When it comes to challenges like these, you really have to take what you can get. And I think this actually worked really well to help separate those two elements. I thought that color was dull and kind of sad, but honestly, that slight orange tint really helped. Using the Derwent watercolor ink in the color Poppy, I shaded the bushes in the background by jamming my brush into them, which for whatever reason is cracking me up because it just looks so violent and sad to my brush, but it creates a nice texture, so that's how I do that. Another Faber-Castell watercolor pencil, this time in deep red. Yes, another Faber-Castell watercolor pencil. Picking up just a little bit of pigment, I colored a few things in like the log, some stones. Not a whole lot going on for that one. Moving on to another watercolor pencil. I used this one to color in just the little bug guys in the background. That, that was it. I thought the Cadmium Red Medium from Core Watercolor was a good choice to color in our skin tone. It just seemed like there was a different deep redness to this watercolor, so I was hoping it would separate it from the other elements. But in an illustration full of red, it, it didn't do much. So I painted in the hand coming out of a hole and the leg sticking out of a bush in the background. Also adding a few textured scales to our fish. And what better way to add berries to our bushes than a nice solid red Sharpie. A bold fine tip you can trust to make lots of little circles. Who would have thought it's another Faber-Castell watercolor pencil? This time it's a thick boy in deep scarlet red. And we are using this to finally color in our grass. Probably definitely went in a little too dark with this one. Should have made it a little lighter up front and worked our way darker in the back, but it, it is what it is. And, and there it is. <laughs> the confidence in this challenge. You can just hear it in my voice. All right, let's move on to our Ohuhu marker in Vermilion. We are going to be adding some blades of grass, adding some texture, attempting some darker parts of our grass, hoping to better separate some elements, and I think it worked okay. I used this Stabilo liner to completely line and add details to our log. Another Ohuhu marker, this time in deep red to color in our jewel, which I'll admit got really dark really fast. Should have started off with a watercolor on that one. And then attempting to add any shadow to that jewel with our Copic in strong red. It definitely helped. I just wish I had a few lighter parts on the gem using watercolor, but oh well. 
I also added a few other dark details because of how dark that red was, so just additional shading on our character. Using a regular colored pencil from Prismacolor in the color Poppy Red, I attempted to color in the side of the river area. I have to say I think the quality of Faber-Castell pencils has really spoiled me, so it is a little rough looking. I do go back and fix that area after I'm done recording, at least to the best of my ability. This wasn't the best addition. Using the fine tip of the Winsor & Newton Pro Marker, I went through and added a few details here and there, like filling in the fish's eyes and adding some little dots and textures to things like the rocks, the dirt, very exciting stuff. I grouped our Posca pens together because they are the exact same color, just a different tip. I used the thinner marker to line our grass and then the thicker one to line the dirt area. And then moving on to another Prismacolor colored pencil, I added the swirl in our log and then completely forgot about our little character's tail, so I added some floof to that. Moving on to supplies I really wasn't sure what I was going to do with, we have our acrylic paint, which seems so odd with the rest of the mix of these supplies. Basically, I just used it like a watercolor, I watered it way down and then colored our character's tail before I forgot about about it again. Then I also went through and added some shading to our character and it was really weird to work with acrylic this watered down because it's not something I normally do. It kind of felt like a gouache. It was very strange, but it worked. Oh geez. Okay, so speaking of gouache, I attempted to use the gouache to line a few elements in this illustration. The hand didn't turn out too bad, but once I got to the fish, things got a little messy. Next up, using the Prismacolor alcohol marker, I continued to darken a few areas that I felt like could use some darkening. Still trying to work on that jewel, adding some depth to our hand hole, and then of course adding those legendary birds in the background. Using our last Prismacolor colored pencil, I just went through and tried to add some texture to the illustration, so mostly in the shaded areas of our character, and some shading here and there with the bugs and the hand. And of course we couldn't get through a red illustration without adding some blood, so I used our teeny weeny coloring pencil to add some blood on the hand and the leg in the background. To darken up a few areas that I felt like were just a little too light, I used the Schmincke Cadmium Red Light to color in the fish, continue shading the water, and shade the rocks just a little bit more in the foreground. Which brings us to our final art supply. We have the Jelly Roll Metallic in red, of course. Because this is our only sparkly art supply, I thought it might be interesting to add some mystical, magical sparkles of the forest around our character and in the background. Don't know how effective this really was. It kind of just looks like berries are floating around. But we did it using all of my red art supplies in one illustration. Aside from the fact that using red supplies lightly just basically turns them pink and a few bumps along the way, I think our mysterious red character turned out really fun. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching me struggle. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Stay golden. But first, a huge thank you to all of my patrons for all of their amazing support. You guys are seriously amazing. Do you want early access to my videos, coloring pages, and more? Check out the link to my Patreon in the description. Thank you guys all so, so much for the support. Bye.